what is the equation for velocity? Benedict, velocity, going all the way back to chapter two. Velocity. Change of position over change of time. Good. We have the equation for velocity. Change of position over change of time or displacement over delta t. That is linear velocity. As I mentioned, I'm going to draw parallels between the linear and the angular. I'm now going to introduce angular velocity. The symbol is omega. This guy right here is a lowercase Greek letter omega. It kind of looks like a curly W. Omega stands for the angular velocity. Okay, if linear velocity is delta x over delta t, what then is angular velocity? Learn. I'm sorry, it'd be the um, arc length over the change of time. Actually, it's not going to be the arc length because the arc length has to do with the linear. So this is all angular stuff. This is angular velocity. What's the symbol we use for the angle? So it's the change in theta over change in time. The angular velocity is change in theta over change in time, where theta is the angular position. So delta theta is the, di di the dis angular displacement or the change in position of an object. What are di possible dimensions, Pooja, for angular velocity? Um, radians, per radians per second is the most common one we're going to use in this class. There are all sorts of other examples for angular velocity. Aaron, give me another one. We could have degrees per second. Sure, Hunter. So far we've had radians per second and degrees per second. Anything else? Try another dimension for time, for example. Radians per hour, degrees per decade. What is the most common one used in your everyday lives? Quick. RPMs, revolutions per minute. There are clearly a whole bunch of different possibilities that we could have. Radians per second is the most common in this class, and RPMs, or revolutions per minute, is the most common outside of this class. So we are actually going to be translating back and forth between the two for angular velocity. For a moment, I do want to talk about the angular displacement, delta theta. What is the equation for delta theta, considering that it is a delta, Lauren? Um. Delta no, always so means. The angular displacement is just going to be the final position minus the initial position, where both refer to the angular position. So it's going to be theta final minus theta initial. Good. Now, in a lot of the problems you're going to see, it talks about clockwise and counterclockwise. We're actually not going to deal with direction yet. Uh, I'm going to deal with that a little bit later. I'm going to point out how clockwise and counterclockwise are actually not very good descriptions of how something's moving angularly, but we're gonna, I found that it's best to do the angular um, direction a little bit later. So let's do, just going to throw it out there, page 248, practice problem number one. Page 248, practice problem number one. Juliana, can you please read, and Tolia, can you please translate? So that's 3.5 revolutions. And it's actually not technically theta, but rather um, delta theta, the change in position. Good. During a time interval of 0.75 seconds, uh, uh, change in time equals 0.75 seconds. What is the angular speed of the time? So omega. <coughs> <coughs> omega equals question. Good. 
Now, I'm going to say that I want to figure this out in radians per second. So we're going to start with angular velocity, which equals uh, change in theta over change in time, or 3.5 revolutions divided by 0 0.75 seconds. And I want to I need to convert this into radians per second rather, rather than revolutions per second. Jack, how are we going to convert? So, um, put um, one revolution on the power. Revolutions will cancel out. What do we need on the top? What's the same as one revolution? Same revolution is um, two pi radians. 2 pi radians. So the revolutions cancel out, we're in radians per second. What do we get? 3.5 times 2 pi divided by 0.75, please. 2 pi radians. That. Do I have not have enough calculators up front? I only see a pile of six. What'd you get, Jay? 9.33. Uh, I'm sorry, I can almost hear you. 29 point? Uh, 9 point. That's plenty, thank you. So we get 29 radians per second. Now, I want to convert this to revolutions per minute. The reason why is because we're going to end up converting back and forth a lot. Yes, sir? Sorry, say again? Did I get it wrong? Is it just nine point? Did I add a two? Are we, am I the crazy one? What's going on here? That's good. I'm not crazy. Good. OK, good. thank you, Katie, for confirming that I'm not crazy. We now have the number of radians per second. I'd like to convert to revolutions per minute, because we're going to convert back and forth between radians per second and revolutions per minute quite a bit. So we have 29.3215 radians per second. We need to convert to revolutions per minute. Please, Juliana, tell me how to convert this. What are we trying to get to? Uh, no, what, what are we trying to get to? What's our goal? The dimensions at the end. We would multiply it by 60 seconds over one minute. Okay, now hold up. So 60 seconds equals one minute, therefore we are now in radians per minute. And then you would multiply that by one revolution over two pi radians. One revolution divided by two pi radians. Radians cancel out, we're now in revolutions per minute. Please, at this time, get out your calculator, the calculator you are going to use on quizzes and final exams in my class, and plug this into your calculator. Because some of you will get it wrong, we need to talk about why that is. Do you have a number? Let me know. I'm sorry, 2,000. Uh, 276.929601. 276.92. Yeah. 9296. 279. What a Depends how many six figs you get, whether you're gonna get 279.99 or 280. Okay. Uh, Anything else? 2763. 2,763.489. Okay, what's amazing here is that this one's just completely wrong. I don't know where this one's coming from, but these are the two that we should be getting. I, I, you guys are amazing. Okay, so, <laughs> I'm guessing you, you missed a, a 10 here somewhere, and I don't know what this one is. Okay, so we have these two. Now, the issue is that one of these is right and one of these is wrong, and here is the problem. In your calculator, 
When you take a number and divide it by 2 pi, what does your calculator actually do? Class. Divides by 2 and multiplies by pi. You need to make sure that you are dividing by the quantity 2 pi. So please make sure that you know how to do that on your calculator. That makes the 279.99 the correct number. In the end, we end up with 280 revolutions per minute. I don't know, I don't know how many times I can stress it, but I have to, I will try. Please make sure you're dividing by the quantity too high. You will make this mistake on the quizzes and final exams. Please, let's, let's lessen the number. Yes, ma'am. And uh, are we still supposed to say anything? It doesn't matter. The, the only time it matters is if you're taking sine, cosine, or tangent, or inverse of those for a, an angle. You're still going to keep the, the, your calculator in degree.